Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Junior Chopa, and today I'd like us to discuss Junior Isis. <laughs> and that's why you'll be like, Ah, Junior, where have you been? You know, where is our financial education? Where did you go to? For the past how many weeks, you guys, does not matter. The only thing that matters is that I'm here at the moment, okay? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what I've learned anyway, the information that I have so far, anyway, about junior isa but as a quick recap of um i don't know if you've watched the previous video i'm going to suggest you make out some time and watch the video and that's on isa's detailed explanation anyway to the best of my ability yes and um i'm going to recommend yes i was wearing a purple gown just to make it easy for you to remember i was wearing a purple gown with some black whatever so just watch that video and you, um, I think it will give you a little bit of background knowledge that you can now use to pursue or delve into this particular video. So without wasting any further time, just a quick recap. I saw it's more like individual savings accounts, you know, and um, we've talked about we've talked about what is the benefit of having an ISA account as against having a general savings account. And we just talked, and we said that an ISA account sort of protects the income that you make from these investments, right? From taxes, so you don't get to pay tax on whatever income you make from, you know, investing in your ISA portfolio or in your ISA accounts, you know. But when you when you choose the general investment platforms, that it's not an ISA label. You sort of have to pay tax on those ones so like we mentioned an isa account is like that umbrella that protects your money from tax so if you put in 100 let's let's assume you deposit 100 pounds into your isa account and at the end of the day whatever you do the stocks or the cash itself generates income let's be very you know very positive and say ah you make up to a million pounds <laughs> in like two weeks time the million pounds is completely yours you know you're not going to pay any tax on it you're not going to have to pay any do you understand that income or profit is completely yours to spend and mine if you're happy enough to share with me <laughs> but if you're doing that with a regular investment and investment accounts you know the government is going to make sure that the one million naira you make you know as profit is going to be taxed shake it so that's basically it now when it comes to juniors um i mean if you have kids i know that one of the things that you're thinking about continuously is like how are you going to make life better for your children how are you going to invest more into their future you know how are you going to the the whole essence of most of these things is to make sure that at least your children are well taken care of in future so one of the reasons or one of the ways of um that you can actually go into this is to open a junior isa account for them so this junior isa account like i mentioned is an isa account specifically for children less than 18 and it can only be opened by an adult that has parental responsibility over this child or the kids that you want to open so you just have to have parental responsibility so just anybody cannot open an isa account for a child and usually um a child can only have one isa account okay so unlike adults that can have multiple you know isa accounts as a child you can only have just one isa account but you can always move or transfer from one provider to another provider of the ISA service that you want but you're not allowed to have two at the same time so that's it for children opening a junior ISA account is quite easy it's just like the normal regular way of opening the adult ISA account as well there are different banks that offer such services there are also different brokers you know beauty societies and things so personally I just like to personally would just recommend um, you know reading reviews more investigating more into whoever you want to use their background history how long have they been in the market what do people say about them and i also like watching some youtube videos on what some experts you know and people that make comparisons that have actually had very good um 
very good experience with regards to investments and things like that so i just love to know what they think about those things so there are basically like two different types of um junior isa accounts that you can either have you can open the cash isa and just leave it there for your child and that's basically like almost like a savings account but in this case you're putting the money in there and you're leaving it steady there with um, a particular percentage increase depending on what they offer you you know 4.3 percent whatever it is actually so the advantage of this is that well you're sure that your money is there right you're sure of the um percentage increase that you get as extra profit from leaving your money with those um you know with the brokers and things so it's almost like the regular well yeah the advantage just like you you're sure that this particular amount of so it's just like you're being very careful you're being extra careful with the money that you've put it's not going to exponentially increase but at the same time you know that your, your money is not going to disappear right now with the stocks and shares isa for the junior isa it's basically like the money that you've deposited you're using it to actively you know buy stocks and shares you're using it to invest in businesses and things and at the end of the day you expect to get profit from these businesses now the money can either go uphill or downhill right because that's what happens with businesses so if the business is booming properly let's assume you use the money you invest it in in, in a car company or one tech tech company right if the company does extra well then you're sure that the money is going to exponentially increase. But then if the company also doesn't do so well, then you also stand the risk of getting less than you actually invested. So it's all dependent on your risk level. But at the end of the day, I just feel like, you know, your child is very young. The money, the money in there would probably, you know, sometimes you just have to step out of your comfort zone to do some extra things and position yourself better. So that's where doing some research would come into play so that you're not just in investing randomly, you know, but you're focusing on some companies that have very good potential and have had good track records as well, because you don't want the money that you've put in for your child to just poof, disappear. But at the same time, you don't want it to, you know, keep crawling and it's just like, so, it's, and it's just like nothing has been done already anyway i personally um i personally would go for a stocks and shares you know junior isa but when choosing stocks and shares i prefer going for the funds you know like index funds now speaking briefly on this kind of index funds because when you also talk about stocks and shares you can either buy individual companies or you're buying like a group of companies where the that's now where you talk about funds right so if you're buying person i prefer buying like a group of companies especially when i'm investing for my kids because let's use the s p 500 which is like a group of companies the the top 500 companies in the us that come together to make up this s p 500 anyway so when you invest in these companies you're not investing in just one company investing you're like spreading out the risk across different companies so it's going to be very very hard for all these companies to collapse at the same time so it sort of even out the risk so if you're putting 100 pounds it will be divided or distributed across these 500 companies if you're putting 1000 pounds it's also distributed across these 500 companies so it means that if any company is doing well it's going to help boost the um, your portfolio However, if if group of companies are also doing well, it's going to sort of um, take down the portfolio. But at the end of the day, the risk is not that ma is not as maximum as investing the whole hundred pounds in just one company, right? So it sort of evens out the risk, and um, at the same time, also sort of evens out the profit. So you're not exponentially going that way because even if one company is doing very great and one company is going down it's also going to bring down the average stuff if you understand what i mean so that's basically it in a, in a, in a nutshell so that's the one i prefer i feel like it's better than just leaving it as a cash isa you know and just making very very 
minimum out of minimal out of the money you have now it's very important to note that if you put any money you deposit into a junior isa for your kids it remains in their name for life like it just remains in their name it's for them you cannot take it out it's not for you to retrieve you cannot assess it they cannot assess it either until they are 18 years you know and most junior isas would then be converted to regular isa accounts once the child turns at 18. so just so you know i feel like it's important to mention so that you know that once you put one thousand pounds nobody is touching it until the child is 18. and once you deposit twenty thousand pounds you're not changing your mind even if you want to change your mind it still remain there you know and it's just for the child until the child is 18. so it's a great way of making investment for your children it's a great way of um if you want to save up for your child for college you know but at the same time if you if you feel like if you want to save up for your child for universities and just to make the future and things better better for them i think that's a very you know beautiful way to do that um what else i think it's also um worth mentioning that you know you'll be like okay so what if somebody go for people what if something happens the child is terminally ill you know and you just need to withdraw the money that's the only time you can actually withdraw the money except the child is terminally ill or god forbid in a case where the child dies actually that you can um, fill up a form or fill out a form that sent to hmrc and you'd be able to after they've given you you know they go ahead then the person would be able to withdraw the money for that purpose or, and that's the only time you'd be able to withdraw from a junior isa account to the best of my knowledge and that's the only time you'll be able to withdraw from a junior isa account and um now um for the junior isa we've talked about you know most of these things i don't know if you have any questions so far if you do please put in the comment section and if i've not covered anything here i'll try to address those the best way that i can now i feel like it's also very important to mention that as you're investing into your child's finances i think that you know considering the risk of some people possibly growing up to feel entitled to feel like oh they have money already so why work why be responsible i feel like it's really important to as they're investing in their finances to also invest in in the individuals themselves you know invest in them teach them about finances teach them about humility teach them about if you're a child of god if you're a christian teach, teach them about about you know being true children of god and just I, I feel like help them know the truth especially in this world where you know many things are just going that way you, you don't want to raise children that at the end of the day they're just using your money to lavish and do things that so i feel like it's also great for us to be very intentional you know intentional parenting is also very important you know and all these things come to play when you when you spend time with your children you know pray for your children intentionally teach your children the word of god um intentionally you know correct them when they are wrong teach them in love show them the right way to go so that when we are adults we we can see that all these efforts would not be like um in vain you see so in this world where there are just many people have different opinions and oh i feel like it's this is actually when we need to catch them very young for christ catch them very young and teach them you know devote our time devote everything we need to to you know to invest in to help them so that god will just help them but at the end of the day as well it's only god that will teach children it's only god that will help us to be our best it's only god that will look at us and say okay as parents you're really putting in your efforts and god is going the extra mile to help make sure that you know we raise responsible children that will at the end of the day give glory to god i don't know if that's your priority i don't know if that's something you hold to higher esteem but i feel like all these things would be a waste of time if at the end of the day you know you 
I don't know but I'm sure you get what I mean so that's it for today guys thank you so much for tuning in and um, if you have any further questions please just let me know I hope I've not missed out on anything but if I have I'll try to address it in any other video that I make okay so take care guys stay tuned for some other time and keep being your best I love you guys take care bye